As the third and final topic on the limited dependent variables, I will introduce so-called Tobit model, which can be used for modeling uh, censored or truncated uh, dependent variables. So let's see what is this truncation and uh, censoring really means. So um, we can have some, some uh, bounds on the dependent variable. It can be dependent variable y could be bounded from below or it could be bounded from above, like in, in my case. So if it is bounded from above, then uh, there is certain upper bound C that Y cannot, uh, cannot exceed. Uh, we could have, of course, some also similarly lower bound, let's say B, capital B, that, uh, that Y is always greater than or equal to the capital B. Okay, so it's some kind of uh, constraint on our dependent variable. And why that matters, we will come to understand a little bit more detail to, in, a, in a following. There is two, two possibilities then what happens to those, uh, uh, those potential observations where this Y exceeds this uh, constraint C. And I use the C in the sense that I think about some kind of capacity constraint. Okay, so we talk about censoring if, if uh, those values that where Y exceeds C are reported as, as equal to y equals c. So this would be a case commonly, for example, if you have some kind of capacity constraint that uh, I will, I will uh, use as an uh, empirical example, uh, the demand for tickets for football matches. Okay, so what, think about y as this kind of uh, um, ticket sale sold for football matches. And think about this kind of uh, uh, stadium that has anyway some fixed capacity so there's just a finite number of seats in the stadium and if it is some kind of extremely interesting match going on then it might be that all tickets are sold out so we will have this capacity constraint c so so if the stadium was bigger then more most likely we could also sell more tickets there so there would be much more interest in the match but uh, because there is this li limited capacity then uh, those kind of sold out events would then have this case that y equals to c. And if you are interested in the latent demand, how much there would be uh, interest in the match, then this, of course, this latent demand might be bigger than this uh, ticket sales. So again, we came to this kind of, kind of term latent variable, latent demand in this case. We observe the actual number of tickets sold, but we do not observe directly this kind of latent demand in those situations where the stadium is sold out. But then there are other, other situations where this, uh, it might be that uh, there is some kind of constraint that, uh, that uh, uh, Y bigger than C are not even possible to uh, observe. So this could be, for example, that if there would be, let's say some kind of salary cap that like in some kind of uh, professional sports, there might be that, uh, that uh, if there's some kind of salary cap, then, uh, then we wouldn't even observe this kind of uh, situation where the, where the, where this kind of um, uh, y equal y greater than c observed. This is also then maybe more common in the in the labor markets would be some kind of minimum wage rule that uh, that uh, of course like I mentioned we can also have this uh, uh, truncation from below. So if we have then kind of uh, minimum wage, then we would have some kind of lower bound b. That, that Y should be always greater than B, otherwise it's not possible. So if in some country there is a minimum wage law that uh, prevents any, any work under some kind of minimum wage, so of course in your observed sample, uh, you wouldn't observe any, any, any kind of wage observations below the minimum level. But uh, it doesn't mean that, uh, that there are not some workers who might be uh, willing to, to work with a lower wage. So those kind of... Uh, uh, employers might be then just unemployed because uh, because then uh, by the law this kind of lower lower wage employment wouldn't be possible. So this kind of uh, truncation is often used in, for example, then estimating uh, earnings uh, or, or, or wage equations when there are some minimum wage laws present. So let me try to illustrate then why this kind of sun, making this distinction between censoring or truncation matters from the point of view of uh, uh, distribution. So I took this kind of illustration from a uh, uh, paper by Thanon and Adnan. And um, here in this, there's three panels. 
So the leftmost panel uh, indicates this kind of usual situation. So think about this kind of, let's say, normal, uh, normal probability density function. And uh, there I have indicated this, uh, this uh, expected value mu of, the, of this uh, dependent variable y. And there's also this uh, capital C is indicated, where is this kind of constraint. So the situation is then a little bit different if we talk about the truncated uh, variable or censored. And uh, notice here that, uh, that in this, uh, this paper, they talk about truncation and censoring from below. So it is kind of lower bound. Whereas in my example, I talk about upper bound when I think about this kind of uh, ticket sale for this limited stadium, for example. Anyway, both, both types of uh, truncation from below or from above is, is possible. Then we also have this case of double truncation or double censoring when there's both upper bound and lower bound. Okay, that's just to clarify. So in the, in the middle of this uh, diagram, we have this truncated case. So in that case, we take this probability mass that has been in the leftmost diagram uh, indicated with the black color. So in the leftmost panel, this uh, this uh, black colored probability mass is of course included in there, so there is not any constraint. But when we have a truncated distribution, then we need to take this kind of probability mass indicated with the black color on the left table. And uh, in the case of the truncated distribution, then this uh, uh, probability mass is uh, uh, distributed uh, proportionately to this uh, this uh, remaining part of the of the of the density function. So remember that, of course, uh, the density function has the probability that um, property that uh, uh, this uh, total probability mass should be equal to one. So if we integrate over this uh, density function, the integ inter definite integral from minus infinity to plus infinity should be always equal to one. And to make sure that this is uh, this is uh, holds. We need to take this uh, this uh, clipped part that we we have truncated. We need to then uh, redistribute it along this uh, density function. So notice that the uh, uh, shape of this uh, truncated distribution changes when we when we clip this uh, left tail of the distribution away as we truncate a random variable. Okay. Whereas in contrast, in this uh, censored case, so notice there. Uh, if we then take again this uh, left tail out of the distribution, but now in the case of censored, we have this kind of, uh, we attribute it to this point C, we put this kind of, uh, kind of uh, discrete part where, where the C is equal, exactly equal to, uh, sorry, this Y is exactly equal to C, has some kind of positive probability. And, uh, and uh, therefore, this, uh, this uh, density function for the remaining part of the distribution of y doesn't really change. So, so this, this uh, diagram kind of illustrates you that, uh, that why it is important to draw the distinction between truncated versus censored uh, uh, density function of y. And because this is the dependent variable, then of course it also matters for the, if, if we have in a regression model such kind of truncated or censored dependent variable, we need to take that into account in the in the estimation. Otherwise, applying OLS estimator would be would be biased and inconsistent. So uh, so this leads to slightly different kind of treatment in the in the regression analysis. If if y is uh, censored versus truncated, and uh, both cases are actually referred to as this kind of uh, Tobit model. So. Um, I come now to this uh, to this uh, example of uh, tickets to the football match, and uh, and this would be the censored case because also those uh, those observations where the match is uh, fully sold out are also observed, but those are reported with this kind of full capacity. Okay, and that would be then the situation where the dependent variable is censored and censored from above. So again, it's useful to then then uh, ref take this kind of latent regression equation and that would be then uh, equation for the potential demand. So I use this y asterisk to indicate the equation for the potential demand. And in case of football, then potential demand might, de might depend on the success of the home team and how, how good is the visiting team. 
uh, perhaps if it's some kind of local derby between two two nearby teams, might be weather conditions. If it's extremely cold weather, then then uh, there's maybe not so much uh, interest in going out to the to the football match if it's raining and so on. So there are many many kind of factors that could influence the the demand for specific uh, specific football match. But then there's also this kind of uh, limited capacity, so that uh, so that uh, if it is uh, most interesting matches, then there would be would be sold out typically. So, in that sense, we have in the censored case, it's kind of uh, uh, we have this kind of discrete case. Uh, in some sense, there is kind of binary case: is the is the match sold out or not? So you can think about this almost as this kind of uh, binary zero one. So, so if it is sold on, out, we are, have this full capacity. But if there are tickets available, then uh, the question is: okay, how many tickets then then there would be? And we can only observe this uh, this latent demand uh, directly when there still are tickets available. But we do not know how much demand there would be uh, when the potentially when the when the match is sold out. Okay. So then. Uh, what can we do then in this kind of situation? So the Tobit model is then uh, then uh, developed for this kind of purposes, and the Tobit refers to the to the um, Nobel Prize winning economist James Tobin, who who uh, developed this kind of approach in the late 1950s already. So this is based on the maximum likelihood estimation that we have already used also in the case of the of the. Um, uh, probit and logit regression. So in some sense, this would be kind of an uh, intermediate case between the standard linear regression and uh, the, the probit regression. Okay, so that's why then, because James Tobin was the developer, it referred to as, uh, as Tobit. So I go directly to the, to the log likelihood function because we have already covered this uh, these uh, two parts, this uh, this uh, classic linear regression using maximum likelihood and uh, and the probit case. So here, uh, firstly, we could we could think about this uh, uh, uncensored observation. So those where the capacity is uh, is still available. So um, for that part, we then just uh, just uh, make this kind of. Uh, uh, log likelihood function of the of the usual linear regression model so you can compare this uh, uh, first component of the log likelihood function indicated with the black color and you can compare that to the log likelihood function of the standard linear regression that i had in my uh, lesson 12a so that applies to the to this kind of uh, directly to this latent regression model when there's no censoring so notice that um, below this sigma symbol in this in this first part, I, I I have this condition that y i is less than c. So so there is capacity still available, and we fit this kind of uh, uh, linear regression line. But uh, if we would apply that to all observations, then there would be potentially bias because we have this uh, censoring at the, at c. So censoring from above, and to take care of that censoring part, then uh, there is the second component, which is then uh, applies to the observations where y is equal to c. So those are those censored observations where we do not know that how much additional demand there might be beyond this level of c. And therefore then for, for this uh, blue part, there we, we use then this idea of the, of the probit regression. So this is actually exactly this, uh, this um, um, cumulative uh, distribution function of the normal distribution that we used in the probit regression so the logic is exactly the same as in the in the in the um, in the probit regression and then we use this kind of latent regression to explain that okay what is the probability that uh, that uh, we have this censoring in those observations so so what is the probability that uh, that the match would be sold out given these kind of characteristics of the match for example so with this blue part, we, we in some sense correct for the bias that the censoring of the dependent variable but would otherwise otherwise create to the to the linear regression model. And uh, of course, if you if you think about it, uh, that if it is just very small fraction of observations that are censored, if you have a 
10,000 observations and only one of them is censored, then it wouldn't really make a, make a big deal. So, so, uh, so uh, this, of course, becomes more and more critical when, uh, when uh, a larger proportion of observations are actually, actually censored. So I'll try to illustrate again with this kind of uh, topic regression with the with the with the censorship, and I took this kind of diagram from the study by Polyakov and Tiere on on pulp food trade, and uh, this example is again actually censoring from below. So so in the in the um, football ticket says uh, it would be other way around that we would be have this kind of censoring from from above, but this is kind of uh, uh, censoring. Uh, uh, from below, and uh, here these uh, black dots indicate the, the observations in this illustration. And uh, notice here then when this there is this kind of uh, latent variable, it is this kind of broken red line, so it can go also to the negative values. But here there is some kind of uh, minimum bound, so so for the low values of x, then notice that this uh, we get to this uh, this. Uh, horizontal line so that's presumably some zero level so we cannot get to the negative and uh, therefore notice this also illustrates the bias of the usual OLS regression so if we would uh, fit the regression line directly using OLS to this uh, observed data when we have this kind of with the small values this kind of uh, censorship then we would have a, a downward biased slope estimates so in some sense, this, uh, this topic regression uh, uh, consists of these two parts. So it, it models this probability that uh, we have censored observations, and then, then, uh, then it puts linear regression above this kind of, uh, for non-censored observations. So then uh, it looks like this kind of like a hockey stick shape, or, or, or remember that in the probit regression, we had this kind of uh, S-shaped curve, so here we have this kind of uh, left tail of the S shape when you have a have a have a uh, censorship from below. Uh, on the other hand, if it would be uh, dependent variable censored from uh, from above, then it would be kind of kind of um, hockey stick uh, upside down, for example. So this kind of illustration uh, can maybe help to understand that why why it's important to take this kind of censorship of the of the dependent variable into account to avoid this kind of bias in the estimation. Okay. So I have here an uh, illustration from another study by uh, Baranzini et al., which is actually from this uh, context that I used as my example. So this is actually uh, demand for football in uh, in the Switzerland. And uh, I'm sorry, the table is quite big, and that's why it's kind of uh, kind of difficult to. To reproduce it, but uh, but um, if you look at this kind of uh, first, this kind of uh, top part of the figure, so so it indicates that uh, that uh, that in the leftmost column there is a dependent variable is some uh, uh, TV spectators. Perhaps the more interesting for our purposes is this these uh, columns indicated by by Roman one, two, three, and four, where the dependent variable is a log number of spectators, and there of course. This kind of uh, cap um, capacity of the stadium then then can cause this kind of uh, censoring to this censoring from above. And um, I do not remember exactly what is the difference between models one, two, three, and four. But let's compare models one and two for sake of illustration. And uh, and uh, notice from the bottom part, so so very bottom rows of the table. Uh, you see that there is uh, throughout this all models there is 428 observations, uh, but they also indicate that uh, in model number one uh, there is uh, 399 observations are uncensored and 29 observations are censored. So it is those 29 observations where this uh, stadium is uh, sold out. Okay, so there is this capacity constraint uh, is actually active. I think in this uh, model number two, they don't don't include any uncensored or censored observations. So in that case, I think they just ignore this. Uh, uh, in in model number two, they just ignore this uh, this censoring. And my point of illustrating you this this particular case is that uh, that very often we are interested in, for example, what is the 
what is the impact of ticket price on the on the on the ticket sales or demand for football so notice here if we compare them this uh, estimated coefficient of log price so log price is this uh, this uh, second explanatory variable in the in the row and uh, there is the three asterisks to indicate in both in models one, two, and three that it's it's uh, statistically significant at at one percent significance level. But if you look at the sign of the coefficient, so notice that in the in the uh, model number one we have a minus zero point five two nine. So so that means that uh, that um, price has negative impact. On the number of spectators so so that would be of course what we would expect normally if uh, that uh, higher the price lower the demand uh, and uh, since it is both both dependent variable is in logarithm and uh, and the price is in logarithm so this is actually the uh, the own price elasticity of demand so so one percent uh, change in price would uh, have uh, have uh, 0 0.5 percent uh, decrease in the demand uh, uh, everything else held constant so this i think this example can illustrate that uh, simply ignoring this kind of uh, uh, censoring or here in this case this kind of capacity of the stadium can uh, very much influence the result here this kind of even this price elasticity has the wrong sign uh, potentially if we if we don't take this kind of capacity constraint into account in this study, they also have a lot of other other explanatory variables, as you can as you can see. But typically, of course, the main interest in this kind of study would be okay. What's the impact of price on 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 demand and uh, ticket sale? Okay. So then another another thing uh, is then uh, that I want to still have mention is this marginal effect that we already discussed in the case of the profit model. So here, when we estimate this kind of uh, topic model with censoring, then uh, we might be interested on the on the impact of uh, price on the ticket sale, or we might be interested on, on the price of ticket on on the demand. And there is uh, slightly different. Uh, so if we take directly this estimated coefficient, so that is the marginal effect of price on the latent variable. So that would be this potential demand. So we had this minus 0 0.5 so that would be the marginal effect on uh, or in that case case it was the elasticity on, on potential demand uh, we might be also interested in what is the marginal effect on 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 ticket sales and uh, for that purpose we need to also take into account the the probability of censoring because of course if the if the um, if the stadium is fully sold then then of course uh, if you if you a uh, marginal change in the in the ticket price would might have like no impact whatsoever so therefore the second expression is then taking into account this kind of okay that there is this beta 2 which is the marginal effect on latent demand but there is also this uh, this phi which is this uh, uh, cumulative distribution function of normal distribution so in the second expression then we correct this uh, for the probability that uh, that uh, actually this is uh, stadium might be sold out and there is no 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 impact whatsoever anymore so that would be then this uh, this marginal effect and that depends of course now on this match characteristic so it depends on this uh, x variables it's no longer constant okay so in the case of the tobit model both these marginal effects might be of interest so we might be interested in the marginal effect on on uh, latent demand but we might be also interested in the marginal effect on ticket sales and then in the case of the in the latter case if it's about ticket sales we could for example then have the marginal impact on the average event or, or we might even go through event by event and see that okay how much the for example small increase in the ticket price would would influence the demand or actually ticket sales and uh, and uh, make some kind of analysis that is it is it profitable to increase the ticket price or not so then what about censoring? So, so uh, I already discussed this briefly that uh, that uh, that uh, there is big difference if the if this kind of upper bound is uh, is then uh, censored or truncated. So, um, 
And one way to think about it, of course, would be that, okay, we might be kind of lazy to model this truncation. What if we just uh, simply excluded these uh, censored observations from the data? So, for example, if we had this kind of uh, capacity constraint, what if we simply just exclude those uh, sold out events and just feed the regression line to those, those observations where the capacity constraint uh, is not met? So this might be a tempting option. And uh, if I go to this, uh, this illustration from this uh, Polyakov teacher study, so suppose that you would just uh, exclude those, uh, those uh, observations that are exactly on this uh, horizontal line. Um, it might, in, in, in this kind of uh, illustration, be a very tempting option. In fact, uh, when I had this class uh, uh, in the classroom, then often, often students ask, why, why don't you just exclude those observations? However, that would then move us from the censoring to the truncation, because then your dependent variable would be just truncated. And the truncation would also involve, uh, involve, involve bias. So we would need to also then model this kind of, uh, kind of uh, uh, truncation of the, of the distribution. And as I mentioned that, uh, that uh, for example, if we have some minimum wage cases, then wage data would be, would be, would be truncated. Uh, you might use this kind of truncated distribution, for example, if we, if we have this dependent variable uh, measured as a percentage, for example, some percentage growth. So, so, so of course, growth rate can be also, also negative, but it might be also, also double truncated if it is percentage of something. So, remember this, uh, this uh, graphical illustration where I mentioned that uh, if this kind of... Uh, dependent variable has a truncated distribution where we have sort of clipped the, uh, either left tail or right tail or both away. So then we need to adjust this, uh, this uh, distribution uh, for this kind of truncation. And uh, technically this adjustment would be done so that if you have this uh, density function lowercase f, which is the density function of the original distribution, then we just need to need to uh, divided by the by the uh, cumulative distribution function capital F in in this truncation point. So this is for the for the case when we have uh, um, have this uh, uh, truncation from the above. If it would be a truncation from below, then we would be dividing by one minus uh, uh, capital F in point C. And this is why why it is important to take this truncation into account is also I have here. Um, indicated below that uh, that uh, expected value of the uh, truncated variable is is uh, is lower than that of the original variable that this latent y asterisk and also the variance becomes smaller become when when we have this kind of uh, uh, truncation so for the variance it doesn't matter if we have left truncated or, or right truncated uh, variable uh, the variance will always be smaller when we have a truncation and then, uh, uh, on the other hand, the expected value depends on if we have a truncation from above or from below. Okay. So then, how do we model this kind of uh, uh, truncated dependent variable? Again, the, the model is called uh, uh, Tobit model, but, uh, but uh, the treatment of the truncated uh, uh, variable is somewhat different, though. Okay. So now there is this kind of situation that we do not actually observe those, uh, those uh, truncated observation. But uh, the treatment is very similar to this uh, censored case in the sense that we also, again, uh, divide this log likelihood function in two parts. And again, we will model this uh, log likelihood of the, of the standard linear regression. That's this part that I have indicated with the black color in this log likelihood function. And notice again that I will talk about here in this example about the um, truncation from above. Uh, in contrast to the censored case, we do not observe here these, uh, these uh, observations uh, uh, exactly on this, uh, this um, or oh, sorry, above this uh, upper bound C. So in the censored case, we still observe those, uh, those values where, where the uh, where this uh, capacity constraint was uh, was binding, but now we we do not observe any of those cases where the upper bound is violated. So for that purpose, then we again take this kind of uh, 
um, part from the probit regression in some sense, it's this blue colored. And, uh, but now we model it so that we take this, uh, these uh, observations that were not truncated. So notice that this is now the probability of no truncation. So this blue part is again from this uh, probit regression directly. But now, because we do not observe those, uh, those censored observations, like in censored regression, we need to correct the bias in another way. And uh, here, then, uh, then we do this correction by then modeling the probability of this observed sample, that probability that it does not get truncated. So uh, this will then correct for this uh, bias that truncation would otherwise cause. So the logic is very similar, but now, now we apply it to those actually all, all observation in the sample. We also take this kind of probability of no truncation into account to correct for the bias. So notice here that, that this, uh, this both are based on the maximum likelihood and both have this kind of like linear regression part and then this kind of probability of, uh, in this case, probably of, of no truncation. Whereas in the case of censoring, we had this kind of probability of censoring modeled explicitly. So if you would need to make a choice that, uh, that whether we would then, then exclude those censored observations and, uh, and use truncated regression instead, of course, it would be better to have those censored observations in the data explicitly because that's also information uh, rather than exclude them away. So that uh, that uh, concludes. And in case of marginal effects, of course, uh, of course, uh, notice that um, we have again this kind of kind of uh, same kind of situation as in the case of censored case that that beta two is the marginal effect of, on the latent untruncated. Uh, so if we if we want to have then then uh, this truncation taken into account, so that should be also taken into account in the uh, marginal marginal effect similar to the to the probit case and like i mentioned in the case of censored regression then in the truncated regression also the the both marginal effects might be might be meaningful so i don't have really good example of the of the uh truncated uh, truncated regression i also took this example of uh, football cells because i don't have really really that kind of readily example for for that also but indeed, this kind of uh, truncator, truncation and censoring are also widely used, for example, modeling the, the sample selection. So that goes a little bit beyond the scope of this course. But, uh, but if, you, if you know the, the Tobit model, it's also very easy to, to extend it, for example, to the Hickit model, which is called Heckman, a two-stage uh, correction for the sample selection. There is also, also similarly, we use this kind of uh, maximum likelihood estimation to to, to complement the, the regression. So that completes the, the topics of this course. So uh, thank you very much for your attention and hope you have uh, enjoyed this uh, video lessons and, uh, and most importantly, learned something from that and uh, also with the with um, empirical exercises and, and practical exercises of the and analytical exercises of the, of the weekly exercises. So thank you and uh, and uh, all the best luck for the for the exam